Now, the war is into its 18th day. Russia has escalated the offensive. Ukraine's defense ministry has now claimed that Russians have shot at women and children who were trying to evacuate along a green corridor in Kiev, killing at least seven people. One child has also been declared dead. Ukrainian president has said Russia was sending in new troops after Ukrainian forces had put 31 of its battalion tactical groups out in action. Air raid alerts has, have been sounded in almost every region of Ukraine, including Kharkiv, Kiev, Zitomir, Zephorizia. Residents have in fact asked to go, they've, they've been asked to avoid going to those war torn zones and to take shelter in the nearest areas. Lviv has been put under high alert as we see the city being hardest hit. Multiple missile strikes that's led to several casualties as well. Bloodbath on the streets of Lviv has been witnessed after back-to-back -back missile strikes. Російські окупанти не можуть нас підкорити. У них немає такої сили, немає такого духу. Вони тримаються тільки на насильстві і тільки на терорі. Тільки на зброї, якої у них багато. Але в окупантів немає жодної природної основи для нормального життя. Для того, щоб люди могли відчувати щастя і мрієти. Вони органічно не здатні робити життя нормальним. Всюди, куди прийшла Росія, на чужу землю, мрії неможливі. Щодо Києва, якщо будуть сотні тисяч людей чи десятки тисяч військових, яких зараз мобілізує Росія, і вони всі прийдуть з сотнями чи з тисячами танками, вони зайдуть в Київ. Ми це розуміємо. Якщо вони будуть робити коврове бомбардування і просто вирішать стерти, просто стерти історичну пам'ять всього цього регіону, історичну а, іс, іс, історію Київської Росії, історію Європи, вони зайдуть в Київ. Якщо вони знищать всіх нас, вони зайдуть в Київ. І тому, якщо в цьому ціль, то ну, тоді пускай заходять, але їм прийдеться жити на цій землі самим. Точно, точно без нас. Друзів серед нас вони тут не знайдуть. Now, India today's Rajesh Pawar, they're sending us this report from his, uh, while he's en route in Bucha, one of that areas that has been completely struck by Russian troops. Let's have a look. Right now I'm on my way to Bucha from Kyiv and here you can see a police car which has been hit by a small rocket and has been damaged. So many such police cars have been hit. There's another one standing on the other side and this is being hit by a small rocket today morning probably. All right, before I go back to Rajesh, I'm going to quickly cut across to Kira Rudik, who's the Ukrainian MP, joining us for more on that. Kira, uh, thank you very much. Appreciate your time. Kira, do give us an insight into what has happened along the green corridors in, uh, along Kiev. We hear that seven people have been killed as airstrikes continue by the Russian troops, and 57 are said to have been injured. Could you give us a confirmation? Uh, hello, thank you for having me. Right, indeed, the green humanitarian corridors uh, have been bombarded by Russians. We are still calculating the amount of people who were killed. But we do know one thing. Russians have no honor. They cannot be trusted. They are killing civilians in the green corridors. So to tell you how the green corridor works. So when there are people who are just civilians who cannot get out, who don't have food, don't have water, and they just need to get uh, outside, they just need to, to, to flee, then the, uh, the commanding from Ukrainian side is talking to commanding with from the Russian side and saying, please let them go, stop fighting so the, the peaceful people can go away. And, and uh, when Russian commands uh, saying yes, then we are taking people out. But since the beginning of the war, there has been so many times when they just broke their word. In peaceful city Mariupol, they have for five days, they would say yes, and then would shoot at the peaceful convoys going out. 
every single time they would say yes and then would shoot at the convoy. Could you believe this? Mothers melting snow to, to give water to their children who just want to get out. Children hiding behind, behind their mommies. They all hope that they will be taken somewhere safe. And then at the finally, when they are uh, when they are getting into these buses, the uh, soldiers are shooting, firing the guns at the buses. Could you believe this? How cruel this, this is? These are people. But Russians, do Russians want to fight women and children? This is like a very, it's, a, it's crazy because people just want to get out from the city that have been bombarded. And uh, we are ready right. to fight, but when Russians give their word that they will let them out and then they're fighting them, this is a war crime. This is the crimes they're committing throughout Ukraine. These atrocities are unbearable. Uh, Kira, we're really gutted to hear that seven people have died, including a child. But as we see, parallelly, there are talks happening almost on a daily basis. There are negotiations happening. Where are these talks really headed to? I don't believe in peaceful negotiations. You already see that they are not even able to fulfill only like fairly minor thing, letting people out of the uh, siege cities. And why would they keep their peaceful promises? Why? I do not believe this. I think they will lie and will lie again. And, uh, and uh, they cannot be trusted. Russians cannot be trusted. And imagine that we have a peace treaty. And what if Putin breaks it? Then what? Additional sanctions? No, we don't, we don't play these games. We don't play them anymore. I do not believe in, in peaceful negotiations with Russia. He's an aggressor. He needs to take out his troops out of Ukrainian land, and then we can think. Then we will think. Kira, you know, you, uh, it reports coming in that a green corridor was struck at. Do you think these are deliberate attempts to deter uh, people in Ukraine? We see that civilians themselves have taken up arms now to fight for their country. Is that why civilians have now become the target of Russian forces? People who are in the green corridors, the women and children are fleeing from the destroyed cities. They are not the, the people who, are bear, who bear, bore arms to protect themselves will be bearing arms why would they be fleeing so this is just people who are fleeing for the safety and russians are deliberately doing you cannot you cannot uh, just accidentally bombard the city right mm. you cannot accidentally bombard the peaceful corridor that you agreed to let people out through right Right. This is uh, unimaginable. So this is what's happening. So we do have all the facts to confirm that they did it intentionally. And they're killing children and women, peaceful people of Ukraine, for their own political sake. Putin does not want to war. He was very adamant about that. He was very clear when he was talking to the members of NATO. He said he planned to stop it. So this is why we need to fight and just secure the civilians who want to flee. Right. Kira, stay with us. I'm going to quickly cut across to Rajesh Pavar. Uh, he's been on ground on route to Bucha. Rajesh, uh, the Ukrainian MP Kira confirms that seven people have died uh, due to airstrikes and bombing along the Green Corridor, which both the, both the countries have agreed upon only to ensure civilians can be evacuated safely. But yet we see unabated strikes coming in. Seven people, including a child who's died in those attacks. Can you confirm me, it's outside which city, please? Which city is she talking about? Kira, would you want to elaborate? Which city has this uh, airstrike taken place, which has killed seven, in, including a child? This is Irpin and Bucha, the, the routes from the Irpin and Bucha. All right, Irpin and Bucha, these are the areas, Rajesh, she says. That's that's also the Bucha, area that you are I, I at. I'm right now coming back from Bucha. Right. And I was in Irpin three days back. Uh, if this is a missile strike, I cannot confirm it. But there have been no air strikes here. Yes, there was a missile which fell yesterday on a food processing plant, about which I sent a, a report from Brovery. Intense fighting is going on in the town of Irpin and Bucha. That is true. But air strikes over there, I cannot confirm it. And 
uh, refugees have been coming out from these smaller towns towards Kyiv city and to be evacuated, evacuated further onwards towards west of Ukraine. But no airstrike in this area as such on a large scale. I cannot confirm this news given by the MP right now. Over to you. Right, Rajesh, you're in the Bucha area. Would you be able to show us a little bit of, of what you see outside your window? You're traveling towards... No, no, it's, it's not possible here. Moment you turn your camera out and there are soldiers and police everywhere. We have been detained already thrice by these people because we are not wearing those press vests, which mm. generally all journalists are supposed to wear for the reason that we could not procure them. But it is not safe right now to point a camera out because there's police on every point, there's soldiers and militia every few meters here. Where are Over you, Rajesh? So are you on road to Bucha? I'm on my way back from Bucha to Kiev right now. Okay. And you see a calm situation all your, uh, on your way along? All along, there are barricades here, anti-tank obstacles being made, being beefed up for an onward onslaught of the Russian army. Any time now, the Bucha, let me tell you, from the outskirts of the city, is just a few kilometers away, uh, probably 10 to 12 kilometers. And we could hear, we were very close to where Ukrainian army was firing rockets on the invading Russian army over there. So the Russian army is quite close on this front to Kyiv city, I would say, Maxima up to 18 to 20 kilometers, not farther than that. Over then, to you. Then you're expecting uh, the Russian forces to be encircling or maybe a strike in Kiev city anytime soon, Rakesh? No, I do not foresee that. As I've been saying, from military point of view, they need to clear Irpin, Bucha, Gostomol, this whole complex. They need to clear it completely to establish a supply chain line. And till that time, they cannot do that. It will be difficult for them to launch a full-scale ground offensive on Kyiv from northwest. Similarly, on the northeast, they need to clear Browry area before they could launch a full-scale ground offensive on Kyiv, which doesn't seem likely in next 48 hours. Over to you. All right, Rajesh, please stay safe. Uh, we know that you're risking your own life as you uh, proceed towards Kyiv, the capital city. Rajesh, uh, of India today there, bringing us those factual ground reports. Uh, Kira, uh, our reporters on ground have been have been giving us insights and glimpses into what's unfolding on ground. We see large-scale devastation, but it appears that the target of the Russian army has been, has been largely military bases. But the allegation that's coming in from Ukraine, uh, your, your own uh, party people along with the president, is that civilians have been constantly targeted at. Uh, do elaborate and el elucidate for us as to what kind of uh, attacks have come about on civilians and civilian establishments, on residential areas. Is it a deliberate attempt to try and trigger panic among uh, citizens of Ukraine? So your correspondent is uh, right now in Bucha and Irpin. There are no military bases in Bucha and Irpin. Mm. These are peaceful cities mm. and they were attacked just cr to create a panic amongst the civilians. Both Bucha and Irpin has been taken down to the ground by air by Russian air force. So there is like no uh, particular uh, ideas why they are doing it uh, other than to surround the city. Mariupol, the peaceful city where that was surrounded and people were starved and about 1300 people already died. Many of hunger, many of airstrikes, many of uh, dehydration. So is this a military city that uh, Russians want to fight? There are civilians there who are, who are died, constantly dying. But since the beginning of war, 85 children were killed. And uh, this is just the confirmed information. Is, there, is these people the ones whom Russians are fighting? Is this what they are trying to do? So right now we see that uh, their plan is to attack the civilian, the civilians to create horror and terror in Ukraine. And this is what's not going to happen. Right, Kira, you know, uh, we see that the West for that matter, as much as many of the appeals that have gone out to the NATO countries, y'all haven't received the kind of support and help that y'all intended to. Uh, with whatever limited military capacity, do you believe strongly that you will be able to put up sufficient resistance to the Russian forces as they inch closer to the capital city of Kiev? We do believe in our resistance. We are uh, fighting very hard. And as of right now, in 18 days of war, we see that Russia was not able to make a significant progress. 
they are killing our people, right? But they are not taking our cities. And this is where we are standing up to them and we will be able to fight them back strongly. And uh, we will, uh, our army is very motivated and our resistance is, is uh, fighting like hell. And this is what we are going to do to continue fighting them at every inch of Ukrainian soil. Right. Kira, do stay with us. Uh, I'm going to quickly cut across to our correspondent Rajesh today, who's on ground, bringing us this ground reality while en route to Bucha. Let's have a look. Hi, my name is Mikhail Kutuvi. I'm 19 years old, and now I'm standing on downtown Kharkiv. There are a lot of Kharkiv symbols here. Freedom Square, Shevchenko Garden, beloved by Kharkiv citizens, Karazina University, and Gazprom. There are the ruins of Kharkiv Regional State Administration behind me. When it was attacked on the morning by the rockets from the sky, Kharkiv volunteers gathered here to coordinate their work with each other and authorities. The building was destroyed by a second blow on another day. There is another destroyed building nearby, commercial business center, which is called 50th Parallel. Perhaps you didn't know, Kharkiv stands on 50th parallel, just like Prague in Czech Republic, Frankfurt on Main in Germany, Krakow in Poland, and Plymouth in Great Britain. The first independent media center of citizen journalism in Ukraine was opened during the Dignity Revolution in 2014, exactly here. The Kremlin covered says that they are hitting military targets only, but in reality, they are destroying the symbols of our cities and our freedom. But we smile through the tears and we will definitely win. Everything will be Ukraine. I am right now crossing the metro station of Brestreka, which was hit by a Russian missile uh, a few days ago. The whole area is in shambles, a lot of damage, and we are not allowed to film here. So, but I'm trying to do it from a car. I want to show you a lorry, the way it has been hit, that it is burnt. It can be seen now. See the situation. This is how a lot of debris all around and the whole area is in shambles. And this is metro station Brestreka inside the Kyiv city. It is right inside the Kyiv city. And this is a missile, a, a massive missile, probably a cruise missile, which hit this area a couple of days ago. I'm right now standing in front of Babaniar Memorial. It is a memorial in the, in the memory of those Jews which were killed by the Nazis in the Second World War. Almost 18% population of Kyiv during the Second World War in the late 1930s was almost 18% of the total population. And these people were massacred by the Nazis and mass graves existed in this area of Babaniar. And this memorial was made to commemorate these people who were killed by the Nazis. There was a claim by the Ukraine that recently a missile has destroyed this memorial or has caused some kind of damage. And they, then they blamed the Russian army of destroying the heritage sites, historical sites of Kyiv city. But here we do not see any kind of damage or any kind of bomb in this area which has landed on missile. Just behind this, a few meters away, up about 200 meters away, as if you can see, is a TV tower. Maybe it was targeted and maybe something fell between these two things, between the memorial and the TV tower, which we cannot see right now. This is Rajesh Pawar for India Today from Babaniar in Kyiv city. If you, if you see behind me, this is a new memorial at Babiar, which was made to commemorate the, 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 the barbaric uh, murdering of Jews during the Second World War by the Nazis. And this is a new memorial which was made by the government after Ukraine became an independent country. Ukrainian government uh, alleged that Russians are destroying historical sites and they gave an example of Babiar that Russian missile or a bomb fell here. If you see towards little away, just 100 meters from here is this TV tower, a huge TV tower, which is a communication center and becomes a legitimate military target. Probably it was being targeted and something fell near it. But as far as Babiar is concerned, I have gone all around and I've shown it on camera. It's totally safe. This is Rajesh Pawar for India Today from Babiar, Kyiv city. I'm standing in front of a TV tower inside the Kyiv city, which was targeted by a Russian missile a few days ago. But this, this missile missed its target just by about 25 to 30 meters. And the result was the TV tower is totally safe and standing. 
but see what happened to the nearby area. You see this pole, this pole is become totally black, it's all gone. And a similar pole was there in the far distance, if you see. And see its portion, other part of the pole went so far and near the car, if you can see, lying on the road. So this is the kind of damage it has done. And if you look around, the buildings have also been damaged. Bring it this end. And look at this car, the state of this car. This car has been badly damaged too, totally. So anything in this area was totally blasted, but it missed its main target, which was the TV tower, just by 25 meters. So this is the kind of precision today's military technologies need if they want to hit the target without any collateral damage. This is Rajesh Pawar from Kiev for India Today. Now, meanwhile, for the first time, the Russian Defense Ministry has released a video of capturing Hostomel airfield near Kiev. Footage here shows Russian troops landing from a military aircraft while huge black smoke can be seen rising from kilometers ahead. This is the same airfield where Russia destroyed the world's largest aircraft, Antonov-225 Maria. Here's a detailed report on that. Landing in a military chopper. Then, quick area domination. Russian troops in action. Reportedly to seize the Hostomel airfield, northwest of the capital, Kyiv. Crouching for the ambush with deadly ammunition. These images, released by Russian Defense Ministry from 24th February, ostensibly capture the massive fight between Ukraine and Russian troops. Plumes of huge black smoke can be seen rising kilometers ahead. The Hostomel airfield alongside the Antonov airport close to Kyiv proved a vital staging post for a planned assault on the capital city. During fight for the airport, Russian shelling had destroyed the world's largest aircraft Antonov AN-225 Miria. This is the first time images of the intense capture was released by Russian Defense Ministry. At least a half dozen Russian helicopters were spotted flying west towards Hostomel. Bureau report, India Today. Now, people around the world staged demonstrations against Moscow's war against Ukraine. People in large numbers were seen with anti-war banners protesting in Slovakia, Georgia's Belisi and Finland's Helsinki. In Slovakia, people came together to extend their support to Ukraine. They hit the streets with anti-war and anti-Putin banners. Children were also part of this demonstration. An anti-war rally that was carried out under the Ukrainian flag took place near the Russian embassy in Georgia's Tbilisi. Protesters there raised slogans in support of Ukraine. Thousands of people came together to showcase their support for Ukraine in Finland's Helsinki. Russians have also been raising their voice against the war. More than 5,000 people were arrested while taking part in protests against Moscow's war on Ukraine in 69 cities across Russia. On the 10th of March, jailed Kremlin critic Alexei Navalny called for anti-war protests in Moscow and other cities today. Absolutely. According to protest monitoring group OVD, close to 14,000 people have been detained so far to be because they took part in anti-war demonstrations in Russia since the start of the invasion. It's now 18 days. <laughs> Now, Russia continues to up the ante against Ukraine in multiple cities and their suburbs, once brimming with life in urban settlements, now reduced to complete rubble. Here are some of those really compelling images that shows the after and before of these very lovely towns that have now turned into ghost cities, ghost towns. These are before-after images coming in from Mykolaiv, a city and municipality in southern Ukraine. 
arguably the main shipbuilding, the center of the Black Sea. Images on your screens here showing a Russian missile attack, a car parking area, a missile hitting the civilian areas and private facilities. The damage caused by these attacks yet to be ascertained. Volnovaka, small city in Donetsk of Ukraine, served as the administrative center of Volnovaka Rion, one of the 18 districts of the Donetsk region. But this small town was also impacted by heavy shelling in just the last few days. Intensity of the damage is visible right in these pictures before and after, showing absolute devastation to that beautiful, beautiful city in Ukraine. Many of those buildings that have been struck at, many of them collapsed, cars have been destroyed. Town seems to be completely deserted, turning into a ghost town with many of their civilians and their citizens there fleeing that town. Kharkiv, the second largest city, continues to be the worst hit. Visuals on your screens here showing the beautiful city now in complete shambles. Buildings have been destroyed, cars have been burnt, no sign of livelihood there. This city too now bears a deserted look, once a very populated city. Millions of them have escaped. Capital city of Kiev, the most populous city, the capital city of Ukraine is now under complete attack. It was known as an important industrial, scientific and cultural center in Eastern Europe. Images on your screens here showing bodies lying all over, charred Russian tanks, buildings and cars at complete ruins. These before after images showing how this capital city once bustling, com commercial and now it bears a deserted look with bodies lying around. A very sorry story. And India Today has accessed satellite images released by Maxa Technologies, which shows extensive damage to civilian infrastructure. Buildings throughout Mariupol has completely been destroyed. These very compelling images, satellite images, showing the port city of Mariupol that's been devastated. That was once completely habitated and bustling, this port city now fully in rubble. Now, United Nations Refugee Agency says that more than 2.5 million people have already fled from Ukraine in what has now become as the largest exodus since World War II. Many of those are women and children as they face threats of human trafficking. Here's more on that. All right, India Today has its largest team of reporters on ground, bringing us the latest in the factual information. We're going to continue tracking those developments as fresh attacks have been reported in several regions of Ukraine, even as the war enters day 18. More on that on the other side. Stay with us.